what's up family this is eugene from kenya so i want to talk to you about something that i believe that it is important now see um it is something that i've always wanted to address um amongst our people from the black community and africans in general so you see um this video is about an african-american in south africa and um at some point he clashes with some chinese people and he goes to a restaurant a chinese restaurant to get some snacks or something and then he falls into trouble and i want you to make this video and then i have some little advice for africans or african americans because this is a problem that sometimes we bring to ourselves as africans so i want to preempt everything but i just want you to watch this video and then i'll give you my maybe something like a warning or something maybe not a warning maybe a precaution let me say a precaution yes so let's watch this video she said that she, she called the police and we have to wait for the police hello family what's up welcome back to the channel make africa great again hope you guys are having a blessed day Listen, I'm going to get right into it. I got something that I want to talk to you guys about. As you can see from the title, racism in South Africa. Yo, like I thought I left America <laughs> to not deal with this. So as you guys know, I've been in South Africa over a year now. And for the most part, it's been a great, great, great journey. Um, I've had met great people. I've learned a lot about different cultures, whether it be the Zulus to the Kosas, and just meeting different cultures, learning different things. I will say majority of my time in South Africa has been a great experience. Um, I was living in Johannesburg, as you guys know, and I've relocated to Port Elizabeth. Now, Port Elizabeth is a little different than Johannesburg. It is, it's, it's, it's nice, it's quiet, it's peaceful, but it's just different. So, um, I'm going to get right into it and let you guys know my problems with Port Elizabeth, okay? So listen, here in Port Elizabeth, I'm staying in Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant is an area where it is majority, uh, how do I say, whites. And um, you have a few blacks here and here, here and there in Mount Pleasant. It's a pretty nice area. And so my first incident, incident was when I went to a local bar here in Mount Pleasant where it's majority of white people that go to this bar. And I went there to get a drink. So I sat outside in the area um, and was waiting for the server to come get me drinks. She didn't come get me drinks. She went to every other table except mine. So I waited about 15 minutes. Then I went inside and spoke to, spoke to the bartender and said, hey, uh, are you guys serving outside? And he says, yes, she hasn't came to you. I've seen you out there. I said, no, she hasn't come to me. I'm waiting for her to come to me. When she, Whenever she can come to me, I would appreciate it. And as soon as I walked into this bar, it was just like, I felt like I didn't belong there, which is very strange with me being in Africa that I felt like I didn't belong in this bar, right? So she finally comes to me, she apologized. She saw me, I guess she just didn't really want to serve me. So, you know, that was just one little incident that I dealt with and you know, I brushed it off because I once was a server and you know, sometimes you just happen to maybe overlook other tables. So I brushed it off, I had my one drink, I tipped her and I left. So now about two days ago, I went to this Chinese uh, shop where they sell, you know, bread, drinks, whatever, chips, whatever you want to get from there. So I was there trying to buy myself some candy. So the candy is in the front by the, by, the, by the register and a gentleman, a white gentleman happened to be behind me. And while I was debating on what little candies I wanted to buy, I told the gentleman behind me to go right ahead. So he proceeds to go on, gets his pack of cigarettes pays and the Asian lady says thank you have a blessed have a good day so then I finally grab my candy and she's just looking at me you know whatever give her my candy and I proceed to pay and then she turns and I and when I get my change back she puts drops it on the counter and you know that's fine so after I grab my change and I'm making about to wait make my way out I was just waiting on a thank you 
have a good day. So I looked and I said, oh, I can't get a thank you. She goes on and says, I don't need your money. What? <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? I don't need your money. I don't care for, your, for you coming here. And I said, so I can't get a thank you. And this is how you're going to talk to a customer because I'm just asking to get the same treatment that you gave this, this gentleman in the store. So she says, you know what? I don't have time to argue with you. Fuck off. I said, excuse me. She says, you heard me. Fuck off. So now her husband proceeds to come from around the back because he hears a commotion. And he comes out and I said, hey, you going to let your wife talk to me like this? This is how you guys treat your customers? He says, I don't care what, what you have to say. Like she said, fuck off. So I said, yo, do you realize this is South Africa? Do you realize that you guys are guests in this country. Do you realize that you should show me the same respect that you showed that white gentleman because I'm not doing anything illegal in here and I'm giving you my money the same way he gave you your money and you have an audacity to treat me like I'm just a nobody. So, after I said that, the husband now, he proceeds to just get more of an attitude and says like she said we don't need your your service here and like she said you can fuck off so at this point they say leave and I said I have no problem leaving but I will tell you one thing don't disrespect me and you guys come to this country and don't show the native people to this country respect and that's the problem so now the wife is starting to get annoyed because I'm voicing my opinion and I'm not just going to allow people to talk to me any type of way. She proceeds to go to the front gate and tries to lock me in there and she wants to now call the police and, and cause a big scene. So I told her, please don't lock me in here. I'm going to leave, but I'm just letting you guys know this behavior is not acceptable and that you guys are visitors in this country and you can go back to China if you're not going to show us respect. So now I proceed to leave. People in the store are looking. I'm causing a big commotion. I didn't want to cause a commotion. But I want to say this to my brothers and sisters in South Africa. They say this is a rainbow nation, right? That is what they say, rainbow nation. What I'm noticing about this rainbow nation is that a lot of black people happen to be at the bottom of the rainbow. I see the Indians, I see the Chinese people, I see a lot of people doing better than majority of the black people. You do have a few black people here in South Africa that are doing good for themselves, but it's not enough. And what I've seen from living in South Africa is that the Chinese people and the Indian people don't really respect the black people. They don't respect the people of this land. And why I'm voicing this is because I left America to get more respect in South Africa because this is supposedly our land. And you, I can't tell you how many times I've been in America where I've had white people tell me to my face, go back to Africa. We don't want you in America. Go back to your country. So when I finally come back to my country, I can't believe to come back home and I'm still dealing with disrespect, but not at the same level as I dealt with in America, but I'm still dealing with disrespect here in South Africa. For me, it's not acceptable. And this is what we do in America. When people disrespect us, when people um, don't show us respect, we record them. We record them and we call these people out to let them know that we will no longer tolerate any more disrespect. So I plan on doing the same thing. I'm going to go back to that store with you guys, record myself so you can see the store here in PE. So you can see these Chinese people and we need to boycott this store and remind these Chinese people that this is not their country and that they need to show black people the native people of this country, the same respect that they show white people. And so I wanted to share that because what I'm noticing in these nicer areas here in Port Elizabeth 
that is majority white people. And I realized the reason why she said we don't need, I don't need your service is because she has white people coming to her store and she really doesn't care if I come or not. But we must remember to show people like this when they have this respect that this is not their country and they must respect you in your country because if they don't respect you guys in South Africa, they're going to come here and do the things that they're doing to us black Americans in America. So I plan on going back to this store, showing you guys what happened and approaching this lady and letting her know that her behavior is not acceptable. So I'll be back with you guys. I'm going to shoot this video and I'm going to show you guys the store, these people who dealt with me and we need to boycott this store and let them know that it's not acceptable for them to not give us the same treatment and respect that they show others. All right, you guys, I'm out. All right, you guys, I'm at the store, which I told you guys about right here. The name of the store is Tasso Supermarket, and it's on Buffalo Road in Port Elizabeth. This is where I dealt with these people who were really rude and being nasty to me for no reason. But it's all good. I'm going to show you these people. We're going to go in there and ask them. I'm just going to ask them, yo, why can't I get a thank you? And you guys for yourself can see how nasty these people are for yourself. All right, let's check it out. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to figure out why they told me to fuck off, but now they still don't want to talk to me. I was just asking him why the other day did you tell me to fuck off when I asked you to just say thank you. So this is in South Africa. I hope you guys see the racism and this is what I'm talking about. And we can't support these kind of establishments because they don't respect us here. Hello. So first thing that I'll say, um, racism is everywhere, you see. And um, I also had a friend, and a Kenyan friend, who went to a restaurant which was, um, it belonged to, you know, some white people. I don't know which race exactly, but it was a white, it was a white people um, restaurant. And then she was not served just like any other person. And she had to wait and she asked, what's wrong with me? And then everyone was just like looking at her. And I don't know, they thought that they can't purchase the things that are there now. Do you know what I told her? The same thing that I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you this. Um, we need to promote our own businesses. We need to promote black businesses. And this this problem uh, of, you know, white supremacy, that when you go to those white restaurants, it's when you feel like you're consuming something which is so original. You're consuming something of a higher class. You know, you yourself, you are promoting white supremacy even without knowing I mean, you should also believe in your African product. I mean, your brother has an hotel somewhere, he's a black person. Why don't you go to promote your black person instead of just um, staying and going to promote white supremacy in places where people don't even thank you, where people take you for granted, you know? And I believe that it is this time that we black people, we need to get this in our minds that we only have us as black people. And we need to look after our own selves. And there is no one who is coming to help us. And so 
whether it's business wise whether it's something which is going on i believe that we need to um promote our own businesses because it's so hard for you to see um a person comes to a white uh, you know a white person coming to a black hotel maybe if he, he or she is just a, a blogger or something or a vlogger who does uh, those things you know um for the video for the camera but in real sense a person who stays their private life you will not see them going in a private um, hotel or promoting a black business they'll always go to their white businesses you know and so i take this chance to tell you that um it is all it is always important to buy at a black business one you're promoting your own people too when there's a problem locals will help you because they there's no way a, a local will come to help you because you skipped their shop and want to buy to another shop which is not theirs which you know okay i'm not trying to be segregative in this sense but bearing on historical uh, pre, uh histories that we've been having we it's time for us to promote our own businesses you see and it saddens me this thing happened in african countries now let me talk about it these things happen in african country because today a person wants a brand product and they prefer getting it to you know um western shops or something or they want to go to western res uh, restaurants and then the treatment that they'll get they'll not like it but they'll just want to go there you know i don't know this is something which is called the stockholm syndrome you get um you, you you get so much interested with the oppressor as time goes because um you feel like it is right for you to do so and they i mean they don't value what you're doing there and they can even kick you out when they have a chance to and you could clearly see um the way brother uh, the way the brother was so sad while um addressing this issue so uh, i i i do believe that um if we stand as black people together because as 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 the video says and as i've always been saying <coughs> on my videos we need to stand together because we have always been at the bottom we have always been seen at the bottom and it is so saddening while we still have our own division we still have our own preferences i understand that um people have their preferences in terms of the product that they consume and um, other things that they do but um if you come to look at it deeply at least try find that quality product that you're looking from from your brother first when they don't have you can consider getting it somewhere but first always promote african businesses whether you are an african-american you're coming to africa please 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 promote the african businesses go to the locals get to know what are they consuming why am i saying this i'm saying this because it will help you when you have problems because you will not only just be buying but you'll also be socializing with them people will thank you don't go to places where people don't thank you people take you for granted and you become mad you start uh, demanding for a thank you no you going to you went to a wrong place you know you went to a wrong place asking for for thanks you can't get thanks in those places why did you go to those places in the first place and i'm here telling you that promote black business promote black business because those places that you're going to seek thank you or validation or anything those people oppresses you and it is time for you to wake up it is time for you to understand that the game is always rigged and the only thing that we have as black people is to stay together is to have that unity and it always saddens me because these things always happen in africa people prefer going to you know kfc you know but they're living uh, black good restaurants with natural foods foods which are not imported where food are being uh, are being cooked naturally and served to them but they prefer those gmo foods which are offered to them i'm not trying to um dilute the name any name of any company but uh, all i'm saying is that let's first try promote our own then from there we can see what to do as people it saddens to be that um those urban places we hate ourselves as black people we don't go to buy in our places but we prefer going to buy to other places and then what do we get after that 
you come back when you are angry, disappointed. And then you'll start seeking help from Africans that you left their shops going to other people's shop. Tell me how will you get help? So with that being said, kindly stick to black business. If you're a black person, kindly promote your own. It doesn't cost like a lot of things to do that. It's something which is simple. You know what I'm saying? So, um, well, that's a lesson which was learned so hard. And I hope that wherever you are, you also learn that lesson. You need to always promote your own, promote black business. And I'll always say it, promote your own, uh, promote black business. Wear those African sandals, you know. Traditional things, they're so, so effective. They're so cheap, so affordable for you, you know. I know sometimes we need to have the brands, you know, it's always good to have a brand. But if you can, please promote your own, promote black business. And so with that, guys, I hope that you learned your lesson. And anyone who is coming to Africa also need to see that because this is something which is real. So guys, um, tell me what you think in the comment section. This is Eugene from Kenya. Peace, love and harmony. Salute.